Hi, I'm Safwan Isruna from IELTS Writing Prep and welcome to our What the Correctors Want series. This will just be an introduction. Each point will be explained in detail in further videos. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the band descriptors, explain their importance and give a brief explanation of each descriptor. The band descriptors are basically an explanation of what you need to do to get the band mark you want. There are four descriptors, task achievement, coherence and cohesion, lexical resource and grammatical range and accuracy. On the left is the band mark and under each of the four descriptors is an explanation. So, what is the importance of understanding the band descriptors? The most important thing is that you know what the correctors want from you in order to give you your target band mark. Knowing the requirements will give you a clear goal to work on. Many students want to improve their band score but don't know what they can do to raise it. As well as learning what to do when writing, we also want to learn what not to do. In this series, we'll go through a number of things that could be causing you to lose marks. You might be doing everything you need to do to achieve a band 8, but you're doing something that is labelled as a band uh, 6. If this happens, you'll be given a band 6 and not an 8. So, it's important to learn about mistakes made at the band marks below your target. Knowing what to aim for and what to avoid will help you to prepare for the exam in a shorter duration of time. And as a result, take the exam fewer times. As we all know, sitting the exam isn't free and retaking the exam a number of times can be expensive. Now, let's take a look at task response. These are the things we need to focus on if we want to get a, back, a good band mark in task response. The first being making sure all parts of the question have been completed. Each question has a number of points that need to be covered and not covering any of these essential parts will mean you haven't completed the task. Being able to identify how many parts a question has and how to answer them is very important. Let's look at these three questions. What are the advantages and disadvantages? So here we have to write about advantages and disadvantages. Notice we have an S here, so it means we need more than one advantage and more than one disadvantage. So in total we need to write at least about four points. What are the causes? So also we have an S here. What are the causes and solutions? So we need to write about more than one cause and more than one solution. Why is job satisfaction important? And how can a suitable job be chosen? So we have two parts here to the question. Then we have answering the question directly and clearly. Answering the question directly and clearly means that you're not just talking in general about the topic in the question, but you are answering the question specifically. To make your answer clear, you should state your answer to the question in the introduction and make sure you do not contradict your answer anywhere within the body of the text. Just answering the question in the introduction isn't enough. 
You need to support your answer with ideas. And after introducing these ideas, you need to support these by explaining them and giving reasons and examples. Let's take a look at this question. To what extent do you agree or disagree that fast food should be banned in schools? You state in your answer that you totally agree that fast food should be banned in schools. And then you have your ideas here. So eating fast food will make students feel tired and it is unhealthy. These ideas need to be explained and supported. So why does fast food make students feel tired? So fast food is usually loaded with simple carbohydrates. These carbohydrates are digested very quickly and as a result lead to a quick spike in energy levels. So the energy levels go up really quickly. Um, this rise is followed by a sudden drop. So the energy levels go down which leaves the person with low energy levels. This makes staying awake and focused difficult. Now we need to give an example of this to further clarify. So a student who studies from 9 to 4 might have fast food at noon and by 1 their blood sugar levels plummet. Many students are worried about the information they're presenting and whether it's factual or whether it's not factual and so on. Um, you don't really need to worry about that. I wouldn't go too crazy with your ideas, um, but we're not really being judged on how you know factual the information that we are you know presenting. Then we have writing using the correct format. Of course, uh, essays are uh, formal, so we want to avoid contractions and idioms, phrasal verbs. Most phrasal verbs are informal, so we want to stay away from using them. We don't want to be writing lists with numbers or using bullet points. And finally, we have the word count. You will not gain any additional marks if you write more than 250 words. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that you're responsible for every word you write. So if you write more, you might make more uh, gra grammatical and spelling mistakes. Let's move on to coherence and cohesion. Um, this is related to how well your essay is organized, how easy it is to understand, and how linked the essay is. Your essay should be organized into paragraphs. An introduction, which is a brief answer to the question. And then you have body paragraphs, which have the details for your answer. And you have a conclusion, which is a summary for your main points. And then we have correct use of linkers. We want to make sure we are using adverbs and conjunctions right. We also want to be making use of reference links, which are um, pronouns, this, that, many, some, and so on, to avoid repetition. And finally, we don't want to be over or under using linkers. Then we have organizing the writing into a logical order. Now, um, every essay should start off with an introduction and then the body paragraphs, and after that, we have the conclusion. Every paragraph, uh, every body paragraph should start off with a topic sentence and then an explanation, you know, some reasons, you know, supporting sentences, and then finish off with examples. If you mess up this order, 
the essay will be very difficult to understand. Then we have writing about one topic and not going off topic as well. Now, anything that is not directly related to your answer in the introduction is off topic. And also, any point that you're making that's not related to the topic sentence, which is the main idea, is considered off topic. Then we have lexical resource. We want to use a wide range of vocabulary. So that means using as many synonyms as possible. Many students are afraid of using a wide range of vocabulary because they might make a, a spelling mistake. Uh, you'll still gain marks for using a variety of words. So you shouldn't uh, let this discourage you from writing you know, a range of vocabulary. Of course, we want to use some formal vocabulary because this is an essay. So this means words that we don't use you know, every, every, every day. So uncommon words. Then we have the correct use of collocations. So these are words that go together, verbs and nouns, adjectives and prepositions, adverbs and adjectives, adjectives and nouns, and so on. After that, we have the correct, we have correct spelling. Of course, correct spelling will gain you marks, but we don't want to go too extreme. Um, you can still, you can make a, a few, you know, spelling mistakes and still get a band 8 or even a band 9. We want to use this vocabulary, this formal vocabulary, in the correct context. Okay. Um, this will impress uh, the corrector. We need to make sure we know if this word has a positive or negative connotation, um, just so that we're not using uh, this word in the wrong place. Then we have grammatical range and accuracy. So this is more or less the same as um, lexical resource. We want to impress the corrector by using a variety of grammatical structures. We want to use complex structures and even if it's not, even if these structures that we're using are not correct, they will help you to get um, above a band mark six. You can make, you know, odd mistakes in, in grammar and still get between an eight and a nine. Some students worry so much about making grammatical mistakes, they make all their structures simple and it's not possible to get over a band six for grammatical range and accuracy. Of course, um, as I said, accuracy is important, but you shouldn't let it get in the way of using a range of grammatical structures. The most important thing is that these mistakes that you're making don't interfere. They don't affect the meaning of the sentence. Then we have correct use of punctuation. We want to make sure we're using punctuation marks uh, correctly and also we're using capital letters and small letters without making mistakes. Thanks for watching. Hit like and subscribe to follow the series.